Salutations, Scoob Believer. Do you have a dream of becoming an entrepreneur, but don't know where to start or even what to do? Where can I gather information quickly about what's in my zone of genius? Don't worry, Scoob Believers. I got you covered. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt and check out an amazing set of AI prompts that will give you ideas, information, and articles to help you get across that start line. Once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt to get you started now. Good luck, Scoob Believer. All right, so if any of you have ever listened to any of my podcasts, you know that self-education is so very important to me. That's why Undiscovered Entrepreneur, an affiliation with Audible, has joined forces to give you this special deal. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash audible and receive a 30-day free trial and a free book. I would suggest a book like The Big Leap or Superfans or anything to get across that start line. So once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash audible for your 30-day free trial and a free book. Do it right now and see what it can do for you. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 52, and I'm here with you. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to another episode of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, DJ Scoob, <laughs> coming at you at whatever device you happen to be listening on. All right, today we are actually talking to uh, number two of three of experienced entrepreneurs, and this is Jonathan. Now, Jonathan is a recruiter for different types of medical fields, and you're going to hear all about that in the podcast. I'm really excited to have him here. Uh, I hope you got a chance to listen to my last episode, which had uh, another experienced entrepreneur, and we'll have one more after this. So today we are talking to Jonathan. So let's take a listen. Salutations, Scoob Believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur. Today, we're talking to experienced entrepreneurs. So today, we're talking to Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, how are you? I am good. I'm good. How about yourself? I am fantastic. Thank you so, so much for being on The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. It's really a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. Fantastic. Okay, so I have one real serious question I'm going to ask you right up front. Okay, Jonathan? All right, here we go. Are you a school believer? Yeah, of course. All right. Thank you so much for being a school believer, Jonathan. I really appreciate you. Okay, so Jonathan, please tell me a little bit about yourself, what you do for your entrepreneur adventure, and how long you've actually been doing it for. Yes, good questions, good questions. So I have been the staffing and recruiting industry for seven years. Um, around 2019, I started my own aesthetic recruiting firm that specializes in really working with plastic surgery offices, dermatology offices, and med spas all across the United States. So essentially what we do is we place top talent, which are plastic surgeons, dermatologists, aesthetic nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and actually any staff that encompass those type of settings. Awesome. And how long have you actually been doing that for? Three years. Three years. So just just sneaking in there to the experienced entrepreneur side. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So can you please just kind of describe to me a little bit about what actually got you started in your entrepreneur adventure? I mean, what was the thing that kind of set it off for you? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So I was working at a staffing firm and I've been working in the industry for a long time. And I was I felt like I was working so hard, but I wasn't really getting anywhere. I was like, OK, this is just hard work being put in. 
And um, I was getting kind of frustrated. I was like, this is not what my life is supposed to be. So uh, my last, the last company I worked for was a staffing firm. He kind of just, it was really like, I don't know, it was kind of meant for me to be there because he gave me the keys and we're like, hey, well, I have all this money. I want you to build this staffing, healthcare staffing firm for me. So it was kind of a chance for me to kind of go through everything I've ever wanted to decide and kind of see what I wanted to do. And through that, I learned about cosmetic dermatology and I really got more into it. And I was like, this is interesting. And I wanted to learn more and more. And after learning more and more, I decided, hey, there's no person staffing in this industry. So I want to lead this space. And I started leading and going into that space. All right. That's awesome. That's a great story. I mean, realizing that where you're sitting is not for you. Coming up, you know, coming up with the idea and realizing this is not where I'm supposed to be. This doesn't feel right. You know, there has to be something else. There's something else out there for me. I know it. And somebody, somebody gave you that chance. Somebody gave you that chance to learn a new field and kind of learn how things go. And then while you were learning, you found that hole, the one place that you were that really needed some help. And you were the guy to come across with that, to, with that help. So that's great. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for doing that. No worries. I wanted to fill. I felt like, you know, they always say a good entrepreneur, you find something that's missing in the market and you feel that need. And that's what I found. I found something that was missing in the market and I wanted to fill that need. All right. That's great. Thank you so much for filling that need. <laughs> so you've only been doing this for three years, but in that first year of your entrepreneur adventure, was there some particular like pitfalls or problems or struggles that you encountered in that first year? Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so the first year was kind of tricky because I literally knew nothing about owning my own business. I only knew how to be an employee and really how to come to work and go home and just work extremely hard at my craft. So I had the hard work part down, but nothing else, <laughs> which as an entrepreneur, the hard work part is like 90% of it, I feel like, and everything else will come once you start working. So, but the, some, some of the biggest things I learned in that first year is one you always want to have a lawyer on your team. And the reason I say that is because you don't know what you don't know and you want to have experts on your team. And I think a lawyer, especially if you're doing business to business or you're doing business to corporation or whatever type of business you're doing, you want to protect yourself. Um, number two, you want to not overspend. So making sure that you have the funds, you have a consistent amount of money coming in. If you're starting off brand new, uh, making sure that you can pay all your bills and still go out there and um, know you're not going to be like number one off the list the first month that you're out, but keeping it going, keeping it working and get until you get to the point that where you're like, okay, wow, I have continuous income coming in. I can support other things, whether it's hiring somebody or whether it's getting new software, because things like that cost a lot of money. Um, so you really want to make sure that you have enough money and that you're, you know, you're, you dot your I's and cross your T's as far as the legal side, too. Yeah, that's really important stuff. Uh, having a lawyer to, to refer to of some kind, if you can afford a lawyer, great, get one, because they're going to know everything that you don't, just like you say. You don't know what you don't know. So make sure you have that available. If you don't have a lawyer and you really don't have the money to get one, some lawyers are uh, will actually help you out once or twice uh, pro bono. Uh, to just help you out. There's other ones. Uh, I know there's a, you probably don't know him. His name is Gordon. He's actually a podcasting uh, lawyer that I actually have access to that helps me out. I'll put his uh, information in the show notes in case you want that. Um, don't overspend. Don't spend the money that you don't have. That is so, so important because all you're going to do is just build yourself a hole. You're going to take that shovel, just keep digging and digging and digging. And then pretty soon you're not going to be able to get your way out of that. So be very mindful about the money that you spend in your entrepreneur adventure um, don't overspend, don't spend too much. Don't get too many loans. A lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs were, Oh, I'll just get a loan. Now you're digging that hole even deeper. Cause now I have interest on top of the, up top of the loan, blah, 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 blah. It gets even worse. So, and one thing I really like you, you mentioned, you just keep working at it. Even though you don't come out of the gate as number one, none of us come out as the gate as number one, unless you're some weird, I don't know, but it just doesn't happen. It really it didn't happen to me. I got to tell you, it did not happen to me. Uh, I'm still a year and a half into this, and I'm still kind of working on it, you know. But as long as you keep that mentality that you're going to keep working no matter what, 
you will definitely work your way into uh, a niche and a place where you can possibly be number one. So that's really important. Thank you so much for that, uh, Jonathan. That's really awesome to, for you to come up with. No worries. All right. So back when you just getting you were just getting started. I mean, you mentioned one person, but did you have any mentors or anybody that you looked up to as you're kind of going along your entrepreneur? Whether it be when you were just getting started or now, is there anybody that you kind of look up to to keep you moving forward? Yeah, so um, there's three people that come in mind. I'm just going to start off. So the first person is the guy that gave me the opportunity. Obviously, like I said, all I knew is about work ethic. He taught me so much about sales, business, and recruiting, and just overall. Dave Fox, he's based out of Miami. He's amazing. Um, later on in my career, I, was, I connected with a mentor via LinkedIn. I was just connecting with people, and I just connected, and we, we, we built a relationship and he was able to help me a lot of just like picking up the phone. Hey, I, I am lost on this. Or could you get, can I get your advice on this? Things like that. Jarvis, um, Jarvis Gray, he's amazing. And then now my current situation, obviously, as you grow, the, your mentors become bigger, right? You, you, you meet people that are bigger in their craft, bigger in what they're doing. Um, and the, one of the mentors that I have right now that are amazing, his name is Carlton Washington. He's the founder of Forever Young Anti-Aging. They have over like 90 locations or 80 locations in all over the United States. So those are the people that I really look to and get good advice from. Fantastic. And it's amazing, isn't it? As you go along in your entrepreneur adventure, you start getting into contact with more interesting people, more people that have knowledge or that are further along than you are, but you still want to emulate. Not so much copy what they're doing or kind of compare yourself to them, but use them as inspiration to move forward onto your entrepreneur adventure. So those are some great people. We're going to link to a lot of their information on the show notes in case anybody wants to look them up. And uh, especially that last one, Carlton Washington, I'm, I'm very interested in him and see what he's about. How did you meet yes. him? How, I mean, we saw that you met uh, Jarvis on LinkedIn. How did you meet Carlton? Yeah, so Carlton, um, he was actually one of my first clients. So, you know, when you're starting off, you're trying to meet everyone, right? You're trying to get out on the field and meet everyone, depending on what niche you're in. And I was trying to meet everybody. But again, when you're building relationships, you really, you're going to have some good relationships with some people. And some people, they're not, every client is not for you, what I'm saying, you know? So you want to be very mindful that I know when you're starting off, you're meeting everybody, but every client is not for you. Um, and you want to have a system that narrow that down. But Carlton, I met, he was one of my first clients and we just built a relationship over time. And it wasn't at first being a mentor at first, just trying to get through the door and just trying to do business with them. But then over time, organically, um, it just led into that space. That's awesome. And you make a very good point, Jonathan, where don't be afraid to say no to a client if they don't fit where you want to be. I mean, yeah. especially starting out as a brand new entrepreneur, you want to say yes to everything because you're really excited and you want to get your name out there. But I mean, if you say yes to the wrong person, you don't think through it through, it actually could turn into a really hard struggle. So be just like you said, be mindful about who you say yes to, who you take in as a client. And don't be afraid to say no or even fire a client if you actually have to, because it does happen. We do fire clients, ladies and gentlemen. It does happen. So <laughs> that's great. And LinkedIn, I mean, where, what is your LinkedIn? Just so I know I have it. Yeah, so my LinkedIn is Jonathan McLean, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-M-C-L-E-A-N. Awesome. Do you spend a lot of time there? Is that where your main uh, social media is? Uh, I wouldn't say main social media, but LinkedIn is like if you're an entrepreneur or any type of business, you need to be on LinkedIn for sure, connecting with with your community, I would say. Uh, but I spend a lot of time on Instagram, too, honestly. No, that's cool. Is your Instagram the same? Yeah, same. Okay. Jonathan. Yep. Fantastic. That's that's good. No, no. Keep that in mind, everybody. OK. <laughs> so. We all have struggles and problems as we go along, but a lot of times these problems and struggles that we have actually turn out to be our biggest or hardest lesson that we we teach ourselves in these kind of things. Is there a specific pitfall that you have that was kind of the best lesson that you've had? Yeah, yeah. So I think one of the biggest pitfalls or one of the kind of uh, scary pitfalls is – 
when you're when you're dealing with certain clients, again, back to what I, I mentioned before, when you're dealing with certain clients, and especially in the beginning, you're bringing on so many people, right? And you're just like, hey, as long as they want to work with me, I want to work with them because I'm building myself up. Well, you know, I had got a client that wasn't the best, didn't have all realistic expectations of the services that they that I could give for them. And they end up being a, a really bad client, um, end up really didn't want to pay the fee at the end after services were completed um and just not not a good client to be around so i i want to say that to say this again like really check out the people that you're working with and doing business with um and you you have that sense right always follow your gut feeling right your gut is going to tell you what's going to be a good option for you and what's not going to be a good option for you so i really think as an entrepreneur you have to follow your gut one and then two just do your research do your research and who, who you're jumping in business with yeah, and I mentioned that a lot in my podcast. So if you listen to any of my podcasts, but even before this one, always check your gut. That's something I'm always saying to myself. What is your gut and your head feeling? Because a lot of times it's trying to point you in a direction one way or the other. Um, so always listen to your gut, just like you said. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right, so is there actually a failure you're actually proud of? I mean, I've had a couple of those where like, I'm glad I had that failure. So is there a failure you're actually proud of having? Um, I would guess that I would say that failure in the same because it taught me, hey, like one, you know, be mindful who you work with. But two, every client's not for you. So uh, really decide what who are you catering to? Who would benefit off that? And you really want to work with people, I say, that really understands your product and the benefit that you're bringing to them. As an entrepreneur, I feel like you're really providing a service that people need. If your product's good, if it really works, if it's good for that, you know, if it's a good product, you're providing a service that's really needed in the market. And people that understand that, really understand that, and then people that don't, just don't. And if you're if you're explaining to them what you do and they still don't find the value in that, I'm going to say that's a big sign that maybe you shouldn't be working with them. All right. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad how they all kind of melt together into that one big lesson that really catapults you into the next level. That's what exactly. it sounds like anyway. So even though it's something negative at first, you, you can kind of look back and go, you know, I'm glad I went through that because now I know better. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So in your three years of your entrepreneur adventure, what is the number one accomplishment that you've had in your lifetime that you're so proud of? In three years, what is the, one of the biggest accomplishments you think you what, said? What accomplishment just, uh, you're like accomplishment. most proud of? Yeah. Um, honestly, I would say honestly still being in business. When I first started, I had no <laughs> idea that I was going to even have one client or one person that pays me, to be honest. And how it just grew 50%. My profits just grew almost 100% each year I've been in business so far. So it's very high demand. But I, I know when you're starting up an entrepreneur, you might, some entrepreneurs might be like, I'm going to make it. And um, some of them might say, hey, I'm not going to make it at all. And they're very scared as to get into it. Um, but as long as one person believe in you, then another person believe in you, then another person believe in you, it will keep going and going. And I think that's my biggest confidence so far is that I'm still in business and I'm still making more profit each and every year that I continue. And just, it all starts with one. It all starts with that first paying client and it just kind of grows from there. You serve that first client as best as you possibly can and they want to go out and tell their friends and or you know their colleagues, hey, you have this same problem or this same thing? Go see Jonathan. He'll take good care of you because he took good care of me. I have the same thing too going on because I recently had my first coaching client I'm really excited to have them and they're really, you know, so I'm doing the same thing too. You know, you want to treat that first one and then it just kind of goes from there and grows and grows and grows. So yeah, good for you. That's amazing to have that first client and then just kind of go on from there. Yeah. Okay. So we know that most of, most of the people that are listening right now are brand new entrepreneurs that are just getting started in your entrepreneur adventure. So if somebody came up to you and said, hey, I want to do something similar to you, but I'm just starting out, what kind of advice would you give them? What kind of things would you tell them to do to get started in their entrepreneur adventures? So I think the, the number one thing that any entrepreneur can do in any space, but it's particularly in my space, 
is knowledge and education. I don't know how much, like, that's the most underrated thing I think people talk about is, but really, you should be educating yourself on a consistent basis. You are your lifeline or your business. So knowledge and education is going to be the first thing. The second thing I would definitely say is conferences. Again, back to the knowledge of education, you learn at those conferences, but then you can also network with community. And that leads me to my third part, which is community. Build a community around you. Build a strong community around people that you can go to and ask questions about what you're dealing with, right? Um, you build your support system, people that support you and want you to win, and you'll do good. Fantastic. Three very, very crucial points in your entrepreneur adventure. And all three I've actually touched in previous podcasts too. So you're just basically saying, okay, just, you know, okay, DJ Scoob, you're right. So <laughs> self-education is really, really important. It's the one really major point that I, I put in because that's how I got as far as blah, blah, blah. that's how I got as far as I did. All basically listening to audiobooks, listening to other podcasts similar to in my niche that I want to be a part of. You know, whatever you can to absorb the knowledge so you can move on in your entrepreneurial adventure so you know kind of what you're doing at that particular point. Um, conferences. I, I have yet to be at my first actual podcast conference. I'm hoping I could be the one this <laughs> this year. But there you can actually physically network with people, shake hands, um, you know, be in groups to be able to talk about what you're doing and, and get advice from other people, too. And that, just like you said, goes right into community. Community is so important, especially nowadays. Since we're so much further connected now than we ever have it in our lifetime as a human being, being able to reach out to somebody that's across country, that's across the world, and getting their information and being able to take it in within yourself to learn from them, and, and all talking about something similar that you're all really into, that's really what community is for, and that's what it's really all about, especially nowadays. Uh, I just got into a community myself called Numospect. And I advocate for that every single day because they've helped me so much in my entrepreneur adventure. If you have any questions about that, school believers, look into the show notes. You can see about uh, Numo Spect. All right, Jonathan, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And if you just go ahead and if you want to take a little, if you want to take a little time here and just kind of have a time to shine here and talk about yourself and what you do and how we could get a hold of you personally, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for uh, having me on the show. So my name is Jonathan McLean. I am the founder and CEO of McLean Aesthetics. So what I like I did, what I do, as I initially stated in the beginning, is I am a recruiting firm. So uh, we recruit for dermatology offices, med spas, plastic surgery office, anything from front desk to a dermatologist and above. So go both ways. If you want to get in contact with me, whether you want to talk more about entrepreneurship, you would like to partner a brand or you're interested in my services, one of the three, give me a call or email. Um, my Instagram is Jonathan McLean, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-M-C-L-E-A-N. And my email is CEO at M-C-L-E-A-N aesthetics.com. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much for being an entrepreneur. All right, school believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up, okay? All right, everybody, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, school believers. That was Jonathan. Man, he was awesome. I really liked everything he really had to say about uh his entrepreneur adventure and the things that he's come across. He had some great, I think it was really important that he had some great, great mentors that he came across over the amount of time that he has been in his entrepreneur adventure for about three years. And really you, it's not all about luck. I mean, when you think about that, Oh, you know, you're lucky you ran into him or you ran into this person, you make your own luck when it comes in running, when it comes into, you know, coming across people that you, that are in your niche, that are in your entrepreneur adventure. And he has some great things following your gut, constant self-education, uh, communities, all of really great things that, that I just talk about all the time in all my entrepreneur podcasts. So just check things out, follow your gut, educate yourself. And, oh yeah, 
don't be afraid to fire your client. <laughs> if your client's not working out for you, you don't want to hang on to something that's not quite working for you, that just doesn't feel right, cut that dead weight. I hate calling it dead weight, but it really is what it is. And use that energy into something that's going to be positive for you. Cut the dead weight and find something that's positive for you. So thank you so much, Jonathan, for being on Undiscovered Entrepreneur. All right, now a little bit about what I'm doing over this next week or so. Uh, my first public group coaching is now going to be available coming up real, real soon. Um, so we're getting ready for that. And if you want to get in on that, you can email me at doing it today coaching at gmail.com. That will be happening on October 3rd. So if you want to get on that, please let me know. Give me an email at doing it today coaching at gmail.com. We'll talk about that kind of thing. Um, coming up October 3rd. Now, just so you know, ahead of time, there is a, just a teeny tiny bit of cost involved, but it all goes towards the podcast and uh, that sort of thing. So I can keep the lights on going here. Um, also, my freebie is ready and we will be uh, doing that. It will be available September 26th, uh, 2023. This is all 2023, just in case you listen to this in the future. So if you want to get on the waiting list on that, please give me an email at uepodcast2021 at gmail.com. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and get you on a wait list so you'll be first in line to get this new freebie that I've been working so hard on. All right, everybody, thank you so much for another great episode. The next week, you'll hear three of three of our experienced entrepreneurs. All right, good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>